and welcome to this episode of the Insider's Guides. I have found the company Quest Aircraft to be absolutely fascinating. Met a couple of women from the company a few weeks ago at a conference and was just even more enamored with the heartbeat of this organization, how they got their start and what the aircraft does around the world. And they were able to set me up with Mark Brown who's the chief demo pilot and the director of marketing for Quest Aircraft. Mark, it's been a while since since you and I first connected that I could actually get you on the podcast because you travel like 300 days a year demoing the Kodiak for people. Thank you for making time in your schedule for me today. No, happy to be here and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the chat. And you told me when we first jumped on the call that you have some exciting news that was just announced. Uh, Quest Aircraft has been acquired. Can you give us just a two second brief on that before we get started in the performance of the aircraft? Absolutely, yeah. So um, as of yesterday, uh, June 13th, uh, Quest Aircraft Company, uh, well, um, De Hare, uh, announced their um, pending acquisition of Quest Aircraft Company. So uh, it's not closed yet. It's uh, expected to close by the end of the year, pending regulatory approvals in uh, Europe and the U.S. But yeah, uh, as of uh, yesterday, um, we have a, a new parent company. So you'll have you'll be sister to the TBM now. That's uh, yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty pretty neat arsenal. Um, the fastest turboprop and the most robust and rugged uh, turboprop. So it's a, it's a perfect match made in heaven, and I think it's going to be a, a great partnership moving forward. Well, I think that bodes well for the um, future of both aircraft. Uh, but let's jump right into the Kodiak. Can you tell me a little bit about the performance of the aircraft from a um, – range and ceiling and um, capacity standpoint? Sure, yeah. So um, I'll just kind of go into a little a quick background, if that's okay, of the airplane and why it exists. Uh, so in the early 2000s, there was no airplane that could do what the Kodiak does. And so a couple guys got together, Dave Bowman, Tom Hamilton, Bruce Kennedy, got together and uh, drew on a napkin um, what the Kodiak would eventually become. And the idea behind it was it was going to be the modern day bush plane, uh, the, the modern day utilitarian workhorse. Um, so think of it kind of like it started as a Jeep Wrangler with wings uh, in, a, in a lot of respect. So had a lot of design criteria, but the, uh, the main criteria was it would run on jet fuel, be able to be a stole airplane, short takeoff and landing airplane. Um, be able to carry up to 10 people and uh, get into and out of the most remote uh, jungle and bush strips anywhere in the world. So the idea um, with those ideas was born the Kodiak 100. Uh, and the airplane can land and take off in less than 1,000 feet at full gross weight, standard conditions at sea level, uh, which is pretty amazing because the gross weight is 7,300 pounds. Um, so getting off the ground in less than a thousand feet with 10 people on board an airplane is pretty, pretty remarkable. Um, it but is. it can, yeah, it can go in and land. Um, it doesn't need even an airport or an airstrip. Uh, we take it into sandbars and to farmers fields, uh, here in Texas. We've, we've landed on beaches all around the world. So you really don't even need an, an airport, uh, to take this airplane in, which is pretty neat. Well, one of the things that I think is great about this airplane is that it was really designed to carry humanitarian missions in places around the world. So going into very rural, very rustic areas. So that's the heart of why it was uh, was designed, which is near and dear to my heart and, and makes me have warm fuzzies uh, about the plane. I've seen it as well. And even though it's a Jeep Wrangler with wings esque, it still has the presence of a corporate type aircraft. Maybe not quite as luxurious, but you would feel safe and secure flying in the airplane, which is one of the things that, that I like about it. Mark, yeah. I asked a little bit, or I mentioned a little bit about the mission, but 
What specific things do you see Kodiak pilots or operators doing with the aircraft that's unique for its mission? Yeah, I mean, the, the Kodiak is an interesting airplane because it has so many different missions around the world. So as you mentioned, it was originally designed for humanitarian groups. Um, so that's certainly one of the, the aspects that people use the airplane for, but it's used for skydive operations, for other special missions operations. So it, we're, we're coming into fire season here in the U.S., so quite a few fire operations use it as a platform for aerial survey, things like that. And our largest demographic is high net worth owner operators. Um, so it's a lot of times uh, people will have a jet in their hangar and they'll also have the Kodiak in their hangar. Um, the Kodiak's pretty neat because you can put it on floats as well and it becomes a pretty great seaplane. It was actually designed from day one to be put on floats and to be a seaplane. So yeah, I mean, it, it's, um, it, it really spreads the gamut and of course we also have commercial operators that use it um, as a air carrier air taxi platform especially in um, third world type countries where the infrastructure isn't quite as robust as it is maybe here and in europe wonderful yeah and i have a client who has a global and a kodiak so i definitely can echo what you're saying with that yeah. talk to me about the range of the Kodiak, how far it can go. We've talked about its landing performance, but what's the limit of its trip capabilities? Yeah, I mean, you can stretch it to 1,100 nautical miles. Um, it's a pretty long trip in a 180 knot airplane, but you could um, you can pull it back and stretch it to 1,100 nautical miles. I typically plan for no more than 1,000 nautical miles. That gives me um, I can I can more or less run it at 100% and still land with 45 minutes reserve, um, at, you know, standard conditions and zero wind. And speaking of reserves, what's the fuel burn for a trip that's a thousand nautical miles? I plan for 45 gallons per hour, 300 pounds per hour. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's a it, it's actually a pretty economical airplane when you and in, in shorter trips. The thousand, most of our customers don't fly it long cross countries very often. It's usually a little bit shorter of a mission. Right, even on even on bigger planes, there are a lot of short missions. So this is actually perfect and very efficient for that. Yeah. Tell me, you've been flying this for a long time now and you obviously fly a lot. Talk to me about the layout of the cockpit and what the pilot workload is as you're in the airplane how that all works well for you. Sure, yeah, so the, the Kodiak is a G1000 platform. Believe it or not, we were actually the first turboprop with a G1000 in it. So the first flying prototype of the Kodiak was 2004, and the G1000 came out in 2004. Um, we weren't the first certified airplane because we didn't get certifi certification until 2007. But every Kodiak that's ever come off the line is a G1000. Our new upgraded model, what we call the Series 2, is the new G1000 NXI. Um, but the, the Kodiak in general was designed to be a very entry-level airplane. So a lot of the humanitarian groups that, that was our original customer base would take very low-time pilots and the Kodiak oftentimes would be their first airplane flying in an operational environment. So from a design perspective, we designed it to be very easy to understand and for the pilot workload to be very small because when you're going into a thousand foot strip on the top of a jungle mountain in Papua New Guinea, you're not thinking about checklists and you don't have another pilot to rely on. So everything had to be very simple and flow oriented in the Kodiak. So um, actually, we most of our customers, we obviously do have checklists, and checklists are certainly the, the backup, but everything in the Kodiak is really centered around flows and, and having a good visual that everything is done, so you're ready for landing, so it's very quick, and you can focus on your speeds and getting into these short strips. What a great concept. I love that. Yeah. How comfortable is the cockpit for you to sit in? Is it small? Is it tight? Do we have um, six foot five pilots uh, scrunching their knees up to their chin when they climb in or is it pretty roomy? No, actually it's it's super roomy. Um, I've had a number, so I've, I have two customers that 
are both NBA, NBA players um, that are six nine and seven one, I think, respectively. And they fly the Kodiak. And then we actually have, I was just flying a few weeks ago with a few pilots, lady pilots that were maybe 5'1", five, 5'2". Five, and the, the seat can adjust and fit them both equally so. Um, in fact, we've had quite a few customers that have other turboprops tell us that they enjoy actually flying the Kodiak on longer missions because it's more comfortable even though it's slower. So, um, you know, for, for me, I love it, but um, I think the anecdotal evidence from our customers is really what, what matters and they, they all seem to like it as well. Tell me about the passenger experience flying in the aircraft. Is there a lav on board or no lab, are you going no. right before? And then what are their other experiences? Yeah, so the, the, the customer experience actually from the first airplane to, in 2008 to 2019, there's been most of our refinements in the plane and upgrades have been around that passenger experience because like I said, initially we started off more as a Jeep Wrangler. So there wasn't a lot of bells and whistles. It was pretty bare bones, bush plane type. And as the airplane started to sell to a different market, specifically the owner operator market here domestically, um, we refined the plane uh, to fit in with what they were wanting, which was a more refined cockpit and a better and a better passenger experience. So. Um, the, the plane as it comes off the line today in 2019, there's three different interior packages for the, for the passengers. We have Tundra, which is more your base level. We have Timberline, which is a, by far our most popular, which is the mid-level. Um, all forward-facing seats, but very comfortable seats. The seat pitch, even with all eight seats in the back, is very comfortable. Um, for me, I'm 5'9", uh, it's great, but we've, we have, a, you know, I live down here in Texas, and. We fly a lot of big Texan guys all around and we don't hear them complain too much. Um, but it's great, There's every, every seat has a window, every seat has, is on a window, so it's, it's a one aisle and two, two seats, um, so one on either side of the aisle. So uh, everyone has air vents, you can get air conditioning, it's carpeted, it's pretty quiet in the back. It's an unpressurized airplane, so it's certainly not near as quiet as something like a business jet. But when I fly around, I actually don't even have headsets in the back for the passengers. So it's, I, I liken it, it's a similar, um, it's a similar decibel level as like a loud restaurant. So if you're in a loud restaurant or a busy restaurant, you're kind of having to, to speak with conviction to somebody across the table, that's about the same decibel level. So it's pretty comfortable without headsets in the back. And it's, I think it's quieter than most people expect, frankly. So overall, I think the passenger, I, don't, I never fly back there, but I, I hear good things. Talk to me about cargo capacity. When you have that many passengers in the plane, how much luggage are they able to take or what other cargo can you take on the aircraft? Yeah, that's the cool thing about the Kodiak. So it was designed to, to haul a whole lot of weight. Um, and it you can take basically useful load, we quote between 3,000 and 3,500 pounds. So depending on how much fuel you put on will depend on what your ultimate payload is. But we can fly for, you know, almost three hours with reserves and still be able to put 10 people plus bags on. Um, so it's a pilot plus nine passengers. There's a cargo pod option for the plane. So it's a, it, you know, a lot of people say it looks pregnant or it looks like a, a fat whale or there's all sorts of analogies out there. but. It does add a bit of width to the plane, but the cargo pod adds a ton more storage. You can put another 750 pounds in the cargo pod. So if, so if you have full passengers, then um, the luggage goes down below. And yeah, it's, it's you can carry quite a bit. And is that something that stays on the aircraft all the time or is it removable? No, if you have the cargo pod option, it stays on the plane all the time. It, it is removable, but it's not something that just comes on and off in a couple hours it's it's a maintenance crew that has to take it on and off i'm picturing that hard uh thing that goes on the top of your jeep when you're traveling right. and you've got yeah. a bunch of kids in the car with you yeah talk to me about the maintenance on the aircraft we've talked about lots of stuff inside and outside the aircraft what's the maintenance schedule and are there any things that you advise people to look out for or keep an eye on 
So again, the, the Kodiak being designed for that humanitarian um, kind of mission, a lot of these pilots are pilot mechanics and they're flying into the most remote places in the world. Um, I mean, some of these strips are days walking distance from the closest MRO and the only way in or out is via airplane. So the, the kind of the design criteria, we say that it was three things. It was robustness, reliability, and safety. Um, those all of the, those three words are built into every aspect of the plane. So the reliability and robustness is the airplane's robust, it shouldn't break. Um, same with the reliable part, but it's also very simple and easy to fix if something does break. So no, uh, the, the Kodiak isn't super innovative when it comes to the materials and things used, and that was done for a reason. It's still an all aluminum riveted body because it's the easiest thing to fix when you're out uh, in, in the bush with just a small spares kit. So the maintenance tends to be very simple and it doesn't break a whole lot. So typical cost of operations from a maintenance standpoint is, is very low. Um, the airplanes changed quite a bit from day one. So in the last 10 years of production, we've changed the plane. So depending on an earlier serial number, there's going to be more things to look at. The plane has only had um, three ADs since the beginning. So we've been out for now 11 years. We've only had three ADs come out, which is which is actually pretty remarkable for a OEM. So there's not a ton to look at. There's no big gotchas. Um, so I, I think, you know, just a typical pre-buy for somebody looking at a used airplane by a Kodiak service center is typically what we recommend. And speaking of service centers, where are those around the world? Which ones have been certified? Do you have to travel a ways to get to one or are there quite a few spread out? It depends on where you are in the world. So we're a pretty short hop airplane. I mean, we're not like a big Gulf Stream that can fly, you know, quite a big distance to get to a service center. So domestically in the US and North America, we have them um, pretty much polka dotted all throughout. So I think everybody, if, I think the goal is to be within 200 or 300 nautical miles of a service center, no matter where you're based domestically. Internationally, they're a bit more spread out. So we tend to have them where we have a high concentration of planes. So there's quite a few in Southern Africa, for example, there's quite a few throughout Asia as well, because those are, a, there's a high con, um, concentration of Kodiaks in those specific places. And how about Europe? Uh, yeah, and there's quite a few in Europe as well. Um, I don't know where they all are, but I, I, I want to say there's, gosh, there's quite, there's a handful of them spread throughout Europe. Mark, will you tell me what you're seeing, since you see it from a OEM perspective, what you're seeing with the residual value of the aircraft? I know turboprops traditionally hold their value a little bit better than, than business jets do. What are you seeing with the Kodiak? Yeah, so, so very good residual values overall. So we as an OEM um, really try our best to protect our residual values for our customers. Um, so actually for a while there, the Kodiak was appreciating simply because the newer airplanes were a little bit more expensive than those first ones that came out. Uh, so the, the residual values were great, um, but overall in the last 11 years, they've held very well. Turboprops, as you mentioned, traditionally hold their value better than just about any other category of plane. The Kodiak seems to do even a little bit better than the average turboprop. And, uh, and like I said, we as an OEM really try to protect those and make sure that everything is, um, our customers are taken care of even after they buy it from us. And then of course, with the announcement yesterday from De Hair, I think the value of all Kodiaks worldwide went up. Um, because I think everyone sees the synergies between the two companies and obviously the TBM has a, an excellent reputation and um, I think that's going to carry over to the Kodiak line now as well. Okay, my favorite question is starting to be on these pilot podcasts. What is the strangest cargo you've seen carried in one of these planes? Um, the strangest cargo I've personally seen is a couple lions in Africa that were tranquilized. So that was pretty interesting. Uh, I've seen a lot of different animals. A lot of our humanitarian groups carry goats and sheep and various, you know, farm animals to and from some of these villages. 
Um, I've carried a whole load of dogs, all sorts of places. Um, so yeah, we a lot of animals is probably the strangest, but I've seen, you know, I've carried engines, um, race car engines and um, all sorts of funny stuff. Yeah. It's amazing to me how diverse the cargo can be on, yeah. on private planes, amazing. Well, Mark, thank you so much for all the information you've given us about the Kodiak. I really appreciate it.